pitcher of the moment, Hidalgo for Notre Dame and Zuricki for Western Michigan. Notre Dame again eight and one. They're on an eight game win streak since that seasoning opening loss in France to South Carolina. And it will be the Irish with the ball first. Hidalgo running the point. The freshman sensation. You will not want to take your eyes off number three. Inside the West Belt, and I have a feeling that is going to be something Notre Dame's going to want to do a lot of tonight. Yeah, they'll be able to go inside. Points in the paint is their specialty. Western Michigan, Spitzley, Kuki, Carlson, Zaricki, and Elder, the starting five for the Broncos out of the Mid American Conference. Western Michigan. They made 11 threes in their last game. They love to shoot the three. They go inside, though, on the opening possession, and that's a nice move by Zaricki. I like it. You know, trying to get inside the paint and go back door, that's a way to break down some pressure. Back into West Belt, and she misses this time. Notre Dame with just eight players available tonight. And off the glass is Carlson. So this was the start that you're hoping for if you're Western Michigan. You've got to be able to hit shots early against the Irish because you're going into an arena that is filled with thousands. And these fans love Irish basketball. So you've got to be able to produce right away and not be affected you know, by the environment that you're playing in. These two teams played exactly one year ago to the night. And it was Notre Dame winning that one 85-57. But Western Michigan kept it close in the first half. And an opening foul on Notre Dame's KK Bransford. So look at Western Michigan's head coach, Shane Klipfell. He's been the head coach there since 2012. Uh, interesting, you just mentioned a, a hostile environment here, Brooke, but he was telling us that this is his favorite arena to play in on the road. <laughs> well, only hostile in terms of they want to see their Irish go on these 10 0 <laughs> runs that they're known to do and cause these type of turnovers. And Notre Dame's been able to capitalize off of their defense 27 points a game off turnovers, so you can't afford you know, any uh, just those mishaps, especially unforced turnovers. It was funny, he said when he comes in, by the time the <laughs> team leaves, they're hugging people and thanking them for their hospitality. So this is a very hospitable opposing arena to play in. Nice drive off the mark, though, by Bransford, and Western Michigan has a chance to build this early lead. Carlson trying to get away. Kuki knocks it down. Kuki drains the three pointer. She's from Athens, Greece. And Western Michigan able to get that three because they drove, they, they penetrate in the lane. That's a nice layup. And Hidalgo, a finger roll action early on. She's so talented and skill set wide. But yeah, Western Michigan, oh, sorry, just being able to get into the paint, drive and dish. These are successful possessions so far. Zaricki knocked away, picked up by Elder. And now Zaricki goes baseline. Oh, that was a nice pass because standing in her way was Watson. Yeah, Zaricki and this Western Michigan team, they're playing with purpose right now. And this is what Hannah Hidalgo does. Say, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take this on over, ladies. I've had enough of this. Give me the ball. Yeah. And one, I was gonna say earlier, is every one of her shots seems to be on the highlight reel. She's got control of the ball at all times, and she's got a high competitive nature and edge to her game. Got that from playing against her brothers. It was great to hear head coach Neil Ivey you know, talk about how hard she plays and the effect that she has on her teammates, right? I mean, her teammates are saying, we just want to play as hard as Hannah plays. So it's been that foundation, underdog, playing with that chip on your shoulder. Yeah, that was uh, quite a, a statement that she made the rest of the team wanting to be like this freshman. They knew it right away. Doggo's dad, Orlando, was actually her high school coach. Brooke talked about her growing up playing against her brothers. They didn't take it easy on her. Nice steal, one of the best in the country. And Jack, she is the best at steals this year. Second chance shot off the mark. And down Please. the lane and one for West Bell. The Irish will come at you in waves. Hidalgo starting it with her defense, and look at Westbell directing and leading the huddle, leading with her voice, one of her strongest assets. It's been in the Westbell family. A great job following up, more offensive rebounds. This, uh, this team is big on the offensive glass as well. It's been another key to their success. 
You know, one of the things Neil was telling us earlier today is that the, the post play has a different mindset this season. What does she mean by that? Well, with the injuries, Notre Dame has got to really play efficiently. Those minutes really rack up. And when you're only dressing seven scholarship players, I think the post players collectively have said, all right, you know, what, what can we do? What's our part? Hannah's out there scoring buckets. So the posts that collectively have scored eight more points a game, then you get that killer defense. Yeah, that's one of the things I don't think is getting enough credit is this Notre Dame defense. And Dalgo pouring on the points here early. She's already got seven points. And we've only played less than four minutes. And for Notre Dame to have held South Carolina to their lowest total, right? It was a loss in the beginning of the season, but 71 points. And we've seen what South Carolina's done this year. They put up a buck 100 uh, a few times this year, as has Notre Dame since that game. So I think that was a, a terrific way to start the season off. It got both teams fired up. Watson grabs it and now stolen back by the Broncos. It was Saxman who's checked into the game, got the steal. Now this Notre Dame team held Purdue to less than 40 points last Sunday. That was the first time that's happened since 2018. Zarecki on the baseline. That fall away shot. She's so good at creating off the balance and off balance. Three on the way. DeWolf knocks it down. 120 career starts for Anna DeWolf. Get the experience, that veteran leadership, and she's knocked down more than a few threes in her career. Yeah, I love how you put it uh, with Coach. She said there's no situation she's probably not faced. Right? Love having that. She's going to keep everybody calm, and, and, and so far there's no situation that has rattled Hannah Hidalgo either. Now, if there is one, that's where they can have <laughs> that conversation on the floor and say, hey, let's, we'll be all right. It's all good. Richardson, number four, and Brown in the game now for the Broncos. First look at her. Broncos have a lot of depth this season. There she is. Richardson off the mark. An easy rebound for Bransford. Hidalgo to the rim. Kira Orbe into the game, 33 in Brown. Hello. Hidalgo's been able to get every time she drives. They got to do a better job if Western Michigan can of trying to stay in front of Hidalgo and make her work a little more sideline to sideline action. It's interesting, Brooke, because I think once teams get used to scouting her, then potentially you're bringing back in Citron, maybe Liv Miles. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the future looks bright for Notre Dame. We're still in that phase of the season where we can hope, and it looks great. Well, so far, Notre Dame is rocking right now from all phases. And it's DeVolf pouring in the three, the Irish up four. Patrick, Jake from State Farm. Making sure that players feel empowered, that they feel like they can go out and be career women after they leave Notre Dame, after they become professional basketball players, whatever they want to do. And the connection of bringing the LIV in and what she was able to build and recruit and how Notre Dame has won national championships. I mean, all of that is built off the vision of what Muffet McGraw laid. The LIV continues to run a very similar style of offense and be influenced by the great Muffet McGraw. We are so grateful for having you just the time that you spent in the game. And it, we'd love to have you back in any possibility, but. <laughs> Thank you for everything you've done. Nice look inside to West Bell. The pass from Hidalgo. Give her the assist. Zarecki, other end, scores in transition. So Western Michigan answering back bucket for bucket. Well, you're concerned with the way that Western Michigan is able to open up their offense. They run a lot of five out. And with that, it will open the lane. So they can continue to find some lanes to drive. The hard part is going to be consistently hitting shots because you know and you feel a run from the Irish is coming soon. Now Western Michigan started the game four for four, and then Notre Dame outscored them 11 to two, but they've crawled back to within four right now. Richardson from Bolingbrook, Illinois. Gira Orbe from Spain. 
international players out on the floor tonight. Nice look inside. West Bell double team and travel. It's a good defensive set there by the Broncos. And Saxman able to get down in there, get her hands on the ball. And the Broncos have got to try to stop that interior presence. They they know how strong the post players are, and they also you know, offensively, they have to keep the floor open. So far, they've played a very calm, poised game. Yeah, Saxman, number 10 in the ground, she holds the program record for single game steal. She had 11 in a game. Here's the Dalgo, speaking of steals, best in the nation in that category. Nice look inside, and a foul on Zeriki. It'll put Marshall on the free throw line. You know, you had asked how the post play has stepped up. Watch this set right here. Great interior pass at Watson. It's a great touch pass inside the Marshall. And it's those types of plays that will open up the offense. You don't hold on to the ball. You don't dribble it. You don't waste time. That's 6-4 making the pass to 6-5. First free throw good. And as you get ready to ring in the new year next Sunday, not this Sunday, next Sunday, we'll have Women's basketball quadruple header right here on ACC Network. It's actually New Year's Eve. Starts at noon Eastern. Florida State will host Wake Forest. And Notre Dame will take on Syracuse in their ACC opener, followed by Louisville against Miami. We'll cap the day off with NC State and Virginia. And we'll be wishing everyone a happy new year. NC State. That's how you do it. Team. Yeah. That's, that's a good State. day. I mean, probably be too tired to go out after that. <laughs> little women's basketball should all, all that exhilarating action come on. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. I have the Notre Dame Syracuse team. We'll see him, Neil Ivy and her team again. This Notre Dame team, they're number five in the net, which is absolutely incredible. Charlie Cream right now, way too early, but he's got them as a number four seed. We both think that may be uh, they may. Get a little higher seating than that by all, when all said and done. I would think so. I mean, to, to be a four seed projected as of right now, never too early to talk Charlie Cream now. Come on, we love that. <laughs> and I think the Irish are in a great spot. You know, they're they're playing hard. They're figuring out who they are without all their pieces. And I think what they're finding is there's just such a strong unit that once they get Miles back, I mean, Coach Ivy said, I'm going to play Miles and Hidalgo together. There's no doubt about that. Oh, Hidalgo, whoa! <laughs> Got a score. With the euro. Yes! Come on. It's going to be a fun year. Wow. Women's basketball is having its moment. Second steal. Nine points for Hidalgo, all here in the opening quarter. Seven point lead for the Irish. There she goes again. Another steal. And a nice pass to DeWolf. All started by the Hidalgo steal. So the last two possessions, it's steal to layup and then it's steal to assist. So folks at home, you can understand how she's able to rack up the stat sheet. It's because she's got these takeover abilities the vision, how quick she is to go after the ball. That great anticipation. Final minute of the opening quarter. Hidalgo with three steals in this quarter. Offensive rebound by Marshall. That's another category Notre Dame's improved in this year, their offensive rebounding. Good look inside to Watson. And Watson draws the foul on the second attempt. Let's go back to those steals, Brooke. They're worth another look. Yeah, and they come in different ways. So we've seen her pick the pockets of a few guards. And here's one. I mean, she did that with her, her <laughs> right hand, I believe. I mean, that was incredible to get her hand all the way across to knock that ball out. And then off the pass, she gets off the defense. So she kind of takes that risk, but she knows she can go after it and get the ball. And once that pass is in the air, that's the time to make your move. So her, her sense of timing defensively is years ahead of typically where you see a freshman. A lot of freshmen, oh. as we both have seen, don't know how to play defense when they get to college. I was one of them. And here West she is Bell. in the ACC. 
cleans that up. Yeah, you know, Hidalgo, that last one, there's some defensive backs that could learn from that last game. I mean, <laughs> that, was, that was elite footwork to get that steal, just like an interception in football. And she's going for it again. Remember Angel McCautry from Louisville? Oh, and sure, how yeah. Icy she was. Like, Hidalgo has similar type of ability as Notre Dame almost gets the shot off. Yeah, the well, first the, quarter. the good news for Hidalgo, she'll get credit for a steal, but they don't get the basket. But what a performance in the first 10 minutes of play. Numbers she's putting up, they'll compare her to point guards in the past, and she's got better numbers than a lot of the all-time greats already, especially at this point in her career, and now we see her range. Well, it's, it was cool to talk to Coach Ivy and kind of look back at that championship game and to see that she averaged 16 points and six steals herself yeah. during the NCAA tournament. She said, oh, I didn't know that. Those are Hannah Hidalgo numbers. Yeah, that was, ex you're right, exactly. She threw it right over to Hidalgo numbers. Kooky. Like a good point, Darsha. Just want to say her name a lot. I want her to have a good game. <laughs> Another three. <laughs> well, she is a fun player and has a great story. I hope we get into it. Uh, nice look inside. That is where Notre Dame has dominated the paint. Uh, nine of their 10 made shots in the first quarter were in the paint. In fact, uh, 18 of their 24 points in that first quarter were from inside. And there's another one. It's averaging career highs this season. And her growth and the key role that she played in that Tennessee game, hitting shots late. She's getting offensive boards, blocking shots. So not, not even just a key role player, but a key contributor. I'll go off the mark. Watson can't save it. It's going to go to Western Michigan. We touched on it a little while ago, but that's the one thing Hidalgo has brought to this program, a different work ethic, a different mentality. Players are having the best seasons of their career at this point, and it starts with what they've seen from Hidalgo. She kind of leads everything. And she's a person who we talked about having an edge and there's there's just something different about a player who's as competitive like that and when you have somebody that's going to do it in practice that's going to do it in drills that you can't help but to want to match that same type of energy and effort that she's putting out starting carlson right now carlson through the lane nice take it's a hard shot to hit and going left side and finishing with the underhand scoop West Good Bell positioning down low. Watson draws the foul. Watson started her career at Oregon, now second season here at Notre Dame. West Belt off the inbounds pass. Now, I'm going to sound a little bit critical, but I bet if the coaching staff, when they go back and watch that out-of-bounds play, they'll want those screens to be a lot sharper and crisper. That looked like a bit relaxing, daisy out-of-bounds play, and it did lead to a shot for the Irish, but not one I thought that they could have gotten a little bit better. More pace. There's Ricky now with eight points. She's made four of her five shots for Western Michigan. And there's another pass, almost got away. Watson down the eight. lane. Yeah. That's the sharp type of mindset you want. I mean, Coach Ivy said, we want to dominate the ball. That was a play where you dominate the ball. Watson's another one of those players that is having the, the best start to a season, highest scoring average of her career at eight points a game. It's Ricky, good denial defense. And Westbelt goes to the deck with Ricky to tie her up. And the possession arrow will give it to Western Michigan. I'd like to see your bigs down on the floor fighting for this loose ball. That's the hand of Hidalgo effect. I mean, yeah. somebody who's that active with their hands, it's it's going to be contagious. She's teaching her team how to get better just by doing and being who she is. Hidalgo get, getting a breather right now. And there's a steal by Bransford. I believe Western Michigan trying to bounce that ball off the leg of Bransford <laughs> to avoid the five second count and her reaction time was much quicker. She was ready. <laughs> she was. Neil Ivy, the reigning ACC coach of the year last year, 
Guided the Irish to the regular season title in the ACC. Right now they're the second highest ranked team in the Atlantic Coast Conference behind NC State. Zeriki. Oh yeah, had two defenders in front of her. Neither one of these teams are keeping the ball very long on the offensive end. I can't think of a time the shot clock surely become a factor in this first half. They're getting up down the yeah. floor pretty quick. Yeah, I think that's a great observation. And to me, teams that, that pass the ball well, you're not turning the ball over. Notre Dame only with six. Western Michigan, as any many teams that face, they've got seven. Uh, so this is, has been a game where they're going to take the first best shot they see. And that's the strategy both teams wanted to play going into this game, and they've been able to execute. Well, here's our Friday night men's basketball doubleheader. Begins at 6 Eastern. P.J. Hall, number 18, Clemson, will host Queens University at Little John Coliseum. And Marcus Burton in Notre Dame will host the Marist Red Foxes here at Purcell. And should be a good evening of hoops right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And one, one note, Brooke, that uh, esteemed statistician Dan Fran just pointed out, Zuricki's got two fouls right now. She's still out on the floor. And a lot of trust in a player who can play with two fouls, but she's really one of their oh. only scoring options. <laughs> Had 16 a game, almost hit a circus shot there. And she's got eight right now. Kuki has six off two made three pointers. Westbell looking and ambitious pass to Watson. Trying to hit that back line. The Broncos putting in a 1 3 1 zone offense, or defense, I should say. Trying to throw the Irish off. Westbelt has started every game of her career at Notre Dame, a true senior leader. Players look up to her on and off the court. 95 career starts. That's another reason with injuries you have a player like Maddie Westbelt who can give you the experience. She's terrific vocally. She's just grown leaps and bounds in her game as well. Westbelt's had five double-doubles this season coming into the year. She'd only had nine for her career. Yeah, I mean, she just Now looks... the shot clock's a factor. Sorry, bro. No, she just looks so in command out there. A nice move by Elder. That shot clock was about to run out. Elder with four points, and Western Michigan trailing by nine. Almost forced another turnover. And this team trying to take the mindset of, you know, break does not start till 8 p.m. Eastern. So they're <laughs> they're here to get a win. And they know what life was like last year against the Irish, so they're trying to make up for it. Three on the way off the mark. A dog goes back in and has the ball. It's good news for Notre Dame. Obinma in the game, number 10 in white. Bransford knocks it down mid-range. Great pull-up jump shot. That was nice and smooth. You could hear it. Notre Dame just taking those rhythm, fast break opportunities when they come, right? Keep the game simple. Another three. Remember, at the start of the game, I was telling you that they make a lot of threes. It hasn't happened yet, but they're putting them up. So, Neil Ivey and Notre Dame up 11. Again, you mean? <laughs> Out of bounds. Obenma stepped out of bounds and turns it back over. She, she was working on it against Purdue last Sunday, too. As Adago just had a fantastic game. 23 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists, 7 steals against the Boilermakers. And that's against a you know Big Ten. That's a Power 5 school right there. So for the Irish to be able to do what they did defensively, you know, her put up those type of numbers. And again, to begin your college career with 31 against South Carolina. And South Carolina's defense, like we've seen how good that is. And, and she is ready, she's ready for the big stage. The lights give it, she wants it all. By the way, we were talking about this being point guard you and how good they've been at that position. Those 31 points against South Carolina, that, that's the most any freshman has ever had in the season opener. Wow. And there's a lot of stars that have come through this program. Hidalgo, shot clock a factor now at five. Forces it up and in. Whoa. There didn't seem to be any shot possible or a good one at that. She just kept elevating. Got great arc on that ball. 
You know, we haven't even mentioned she's 5'6". It's not like this is a 6'7 okay. player out there doing what she's doing. Hey, she's Ransford. able to get space. Go ahead, what were you saying about the dog in that? She's able to get the spacing that, that she needs at 5'6", right? So you're saying she's doing all these things, and that is truly incredible. Because, yeah, she's playing against the bigs in the land. And you see the wolf trying to add a little magic to that pass, and I think was immediately like, well, I don't know if that was the right call. And uh, they're hoping to get Citron back for the start of ACC play. No word yet on when Liv Miles would return. Drish still out as well. Yeah, Citron so out. on top. Sorry, so Citron being so on top of her rehab. She's been shooting, she's been running. So they're real excited uh, about her progress and her ability to be back. You know, they're hoping within the next couple weeks. Citron, first team all ACC last year, former ACC Rookie of the Year as well. And Western Michigan having a tough time making shots right now. To Wolf, one on one against Zurigi has two fouls, but she loses it. Good D by the Broncos. Yeah, Broncos still playing hard. They need some of those shots to go in that they're getting in the paint. That's going to be an over and back. Another turnover for the Broncos. But what I'm seeing too is that they're playing downhill. They're getting into the paint, but by the time they're there, you see they're out of balance and a lot of those shots are, are getting thrown up and they're trying to get bailed out with the foul. And, and that could be a cause of fatigue. So as your body gets more you know, tired, the game goes on, you're trying to get it in the paint, those shots are gonna look a little sloppier. Western Michigan shooting 37%, Notre Dame 52% in the first half of play. We're getting ready to finish the second quarter. Nice pass and DeWolf. Unable to get the layup down, and then a foul on the rebound. <laughs> West Bell came crashing in to get the rebound. You see DeWolf immediately look for Hidalgo to say, my bad. Yeah. And battle underneath. We've seen more post players on the floor in this game. I feel like the, yeah. in any game I've watched this season, ladies getting, getting after, after it. it. Yep. Was on Craig Edwards. I fought. Nice offense rebound by Marshall. She's still fighting. West Bell comes out of there with it. Marshall. That seemed like it was an eternity. <laughs> I believe the Irish may have gotten four offensive rebounds yeah. on that possession alone. And those two right there are the big culprits, West Bell and Marshall. They gobble them up. What are you gonna do? You see the size difference. You just, you're not going to box out Marshall and Westbelt in the paint. Well, ACC PM with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannebaum. Weekdays from Mark Charlotte's studio in his basement at 4 Eastern. They'll continue talking college football and have the latest from around the conference right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Now that last play looked like a, a rebounding drill. Yeah. Remember those drills where they would put the thing over the basket, it wouldn't go in, just kept popping out, grabbing rebounds. And they're so quick to read where the ball is coming off the glass. The timing is excellent. Uh, that's an example. Yeah, that, that's an example of the play I'm talking about, right? They're able to drive, but their chest, they're getting ahead of, of kind of where their, the rest of their lower body is. So it's causing them to shoot off balance. Coach Ivy said that she calls DeWolf, Coach DeWolf. There's another coach out on the floor. In fact, she gives her a lot of a lot of freedom to come challenge coach, bring new ideas to the team and to what they're trying to do. There's DeWolf open for three. The doggo offensive rebound. Yeah, to your point about DeWolf, Coach Ivy was talking about how much that they collaborate on different plays and she asked her what she's seeing out there on the floor. I would be surprised if we see Coach DeWolf in action in the next few years as Hidalgo knocks another jumper down. I couldn't even see her. I just saw the ball go <laughs> up and in, and I knew somebody was on the ground. Check Able this out. to get off the shot, right? Just a one dribble, <laughs> a little contact, floater. 
it's such a soft touch, right? I mean, she's quick, yes, but complete control, or and complete control of the ball. And then when she stops, she's in rhythm, in balance, right? She just, she never looks off balance to me. Making 80% of her free throws this season so far to that foul. Is on Craig Edwards. Talgo playing D now on Gira Oribe. Shot clock at five. Westfeld again going to the deck to save it. And uh, a jump ball is going to give it. Possession there is pointing it to, Notre, or to Western Michigan right now. Let's see. I, I thought the shot clock had gone off, but never heard the buzzer. It's going to be Notre Dame's ball. Oh, Westbell getting her hand in there, affecting the crossover. Another deflection. Good pass. Good look. Well, Westbell's got some easy buckets, courtesy of some nice passes. She's got 11 points here in the first half, including five rebounds. That angle, that cut across the lane, where you go from one free throw corner to the, the opposite side of the lane, it's so precise, and that's what's getting it open for her, is that she's able to get in front of the defense and get there. And Marshall, with the, the height and the vision, she can dump that ball right into her. Fouls on Westfeld. Western Michigan just having a tough time scoring. They have only scored one basket in their last 13 possessions. Yeah, I mean, you can see the players breathing pretty heavy. Final seconds to the half. Doggo working another steal. Zeriki, take that. That's a good way to end the half for Western Michigan. Zeriki yeah. with the layup at the buzzer. Give the Broncos a little momentum. All right, let's dream. Well, it was a real treat to call the game for Olivia Miles getting her triple double in the NCAA yeah. tournament. Liv Miles has had a, a front row seat watching the Hidalgo show here to start this season. <laughs> the Wolf, three. Wolf, a big sigh of relief after hitting that shot. Uh, more weapons for the Irish. We mentioned they're not much of a three point shooting team, but the Wolf can certainly knock that down. Can you imagine how stifling it will be to go against Olivia Miles and Hannah Hidalgo in the backcourt? That, that's what I mean. We're still at that stage where we can think about what if, because it's the start of the season. I mean, when you get Liv Miles and Citroen back in this lineup with the doggo and then the improved play of everyone else, I mean, there's people that are saying Notre Dame may get over, as Coach Ivy says, the, the sweet 16 roadblock. Perhaps they can yeah. go further this year. Yeah, that's the next step and in, in goal. Uh, for Coach Ivy and her staff. And when you talk to Coach Clipfeld from Western Michigan about preparing for this team, and we asked him specifically about for Hidalgo. He said, all right, what are you thinking about? He said, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> so you can't understand her speed until you see it in person. She's she's a jet. She's a complete nuisance out there on the floor. Yeah. I think that's a, a great positive way to describe uh, the way that she plays. And he said, defensively, you, you can't even pick your poison because they have so many poisons. Yeah, that was a direct quote. He said complete nuisance on both sides of the ball. Notre Dame's done a good job avoiding uh, fouls. That was only their third foul of the game. Kuki defended by Westbell, switches on with Watson. Kuki leaning in, and Watson rips down the rebound. Up to DeWolf. Westbell looking at to add to the paint points. Kuki, she's made two threes. This one's off the mark. Again, uh, Kuki from Athens, Greece. And uh, when you're from Athens, it, a lot of times you live on one of the little islands off of the, the main city. That's where. She resides with her family, and the team actually got to visit them last summer. They took a Europe trip. Western Michigan did. They even got to eat dinner at the Kuki family. And, and so they left a, a great impression in Sidaldo. Getting ready to do something special. You can already feel it. Now, maybe the layup starts to look easy, but a rare miss from Hidalgo. I think it was too easy. 
It's got to yeah, be spectacular. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Not a high Elder. degree of difficulty. <laughs> Elder with the bucket for the Broncos. Sign me up for the Greek island trip. Oh, you know, oh the, my god! The dinner with the Kooky family. I, I bet that was amazing. So I have been obsessed with Greek chicken salads for the last year and a half. And, and I can only imagine what, what the feta is like <laughs> actually in Greece. So yeah, that's on the bucket list. Well, Coach was telling us that the little town she's from is building an arena. And uh, they've asked Western Michigan to come play in that arena when it opens, that's play so the first cool. game in there, yeah. Good move by Zeriki to put up another Bronco basket. Broncos trying out that 1-3-1, one, one, and that's where Notre Dame can get the shots, is behind that middle line of three in those, those corners. Westfeld's so good at finding those pockets. This is where Western Michigan needs to take advantage of the, the rare misses from Notre Dame in the paint. Carlson's three on the way off the mark. Bransford will push it. Hidalgo knocks it down. It's a two just inside the three-point line. And the Broncos need to keep trying to drive. And you remember the first possession of the game, they went back door. And we haven't seen a whole lot of that. You've seen a lot of, a lot of deflections and activity from Notre Dame's defense. It's, it's limiting their ability to drive, to try to get back to that mindset like they did here. Great look. Yes. Ricky muscles it up and in. That was a nice pass from Carlson. Timeout, Notre Dame. Western Michigan coming out looking strong. Notre Dame still up 18. It's flair the, the Irish fans are showing up with tonight. But both, both I mean, teams, I mean, the coaches said, look, it's it's about our mindset. We got to keep this thing sharp. So the fans can have fun, but for the players, it is business before break. West Bell scoring right out of the timeout. Yeah, Neil Ivy calling that timeout. She actually, <laughs> I thought it was funny when she said, you know, it's the last game before Christmas. Kids are out on the floor. They're thinking about what they're eating while they're shooting free throws. They're thinking about <laughs> who they're going to see at home over break. You got to get them locked in for this final game before the break. And Western Michigan was uh, saying the same type of things. What was well, that like, like, like? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's games like this that you know, you do, you're, you're looking forward to mom's cooking. You're thinking about a couple of days, maybe home with your family. You know, as a, as a winter athlete, you really don't get that much of a holiday break. I mean, I remember being home for a few days and then coming back to campus and, and it's been at least a month where it's just you and the men's team on campus. It's like two a day practices all over again. So yeah, the, the players know like what's on the other side of that, including the ACC schedule. So uh, they're definitely looking forward to the break, but uh, mature enough uh, to handle business this evening. And I've been impressed by the way that Western Michigan started this game. I thought they, they've they been confident you know, the way that they've played this year, a lot of comebacks. So Coach was quick to say, you know, we know we're never out of a game, but uh, the comebacks have been frustrating and exhilarating. Saxon so missed both those free throws. She was 8 of 10 prior to missing those two free throws. So Ricky, the leading scorer in the game for Western Michigan with 12 points. Last year, one of the best players at the Division II level. Played uh, Division II basketball at Saginaw Valley State. We used to do the Division II championship on ESPN, and I, I loved calling that level basketball. Nice look inside to Marshall. And you see how smoothly she moves as well. I mean, her, her footwork and her confidence is at an all-time high this year. Yeah, Division II ball is fun. You got, you got a lot of little shorty guards in there. You know, yeah. Speak it up for the five sixers. Bransford looking for DeWolf. Yes. Back to Westbell. Woo! You see how height the Notre Dame bench got off of that assist. Olivia Miles was off her feet. Great dish from DeWolf. Coach Ivy's got to be happy with how the Irish have come out of that last time out. She was not happy going into it. Westbelt rebound. Bransford pushing it. She'll shoot. Good battle by Marshall. Just went over everybody. Hidalgo for three. 
And it's short. I'm with you that I think the more difficult a shot is for Hidalgo, <laughs> the more likely it is to go in. Teams are going to play off for 10 feet now. They're just going to give her <laughs> wide open looks. <laughs> a little reverse psychology. Yeah, exactly. How about this Notre Dame offense, bro? Uh, it looks good. Uh, the passing is Chris. Coach Ivy and her staff got this team right back to where they want to be. Only tell part of the story. She's had two assists, two blocks, and two steals along with those numbers as well. Just a complete game for West Bell. So Ricky misses and then a backing up. And a foul's caught on West Bell. Backing into her was number 23, Evan Carey. Westbelt's going to get a breather after picking up her third foul. Well, it'll be a situation if the Irish find themselves getting into foul trouble anytime in the season if they're still only going to have you know, eight dressed. Now tonight, Western Michigan's only shot two free throws. The Irish have not really had to deal with that situation. I love that range yeah. on that last jumper. Richardson knocking it down. DeWolf answers with another three. Good, Good take, take. Was Ricky. I just love the fact that she can keep her head up while she's dribbling. It is so hard to do that. Your natural instinct is to want to kind of crowd and protect yourself. Instead, she's like, no, I'm willing to take the risk. Let's get back to good those offense. last two shots. Yeah, good spacing. You know, it's just about, hey, let's take the shot. We're here. And I, and I like it. You can't have hesitation. When you play against the Irish, if you get an open look, you better take it because not many are coming. Carrier into the game for the first time this season. Number 23, she's the tallest player they have at 6'4". The freshman, it's her with the ball, trying to hang on to it. Shot clock down to under a second, and it didn't hit rim, so ball will go back to Notre Dame. You know, the timing Carrier. of trying to get into a game, you're going to mention probably Carrier getting these minutes. All right, it's going to take her a long time to get adjusted to it, but I like the set. It was a good screen and roll from Zariki, and, and they found her open in the paint. Watson has Carrier on her. Spins around her, and then somehow gets that offensive rebound. Hidalgo. And Bransford fighting for it, grabs it. Love that effort. Bransford. There's Hidalgo right over there. First one to pick a teammate up. Yeah. Whatever. And that's what I mean about the edge. Right? That, that's where the edge shines through to me. I mean, it's it's always there. It does not matter the score. She's a competitor. DeWolf okay. getting hot from three. Do it again, DeWolf. Now DeWolf's made four three-pointers in this game. 14 points. Wolf going for the steal. So Ricky weaving through the baseline. Notre Dame up 25 as we approach the final 90 seconds of the third quarter. And a foul called on Gabby Saxman will put Hidalgo on the free throw line. Hidalgo the USA Basketball Female Athlete of the Year. Let's put that in perspective. Everyone that plays USA Basketball is eligible for the award, but she's only the third to win as a high school player. So she was selected that based on her performance prior to the start of this collegiate season. And the other two that did it, Brianna Stewart and Paige Beckers. Beckers. I mean, that's some elite company to be in. That's how yes. special she is. Perfectly said. I mean, USA Basketball is is the elite of the elite, and to, to have made your mark there so early on, 
Oh, and to do it with the big names that you mentioned as well. I mean, the, the accolades for Hidalgo are just beginning. She won a, a gold medal with the U19 team. George's Joni Taylor was the coach. There's another nice looking jumper by Richardson. She's made some long range shots tonight. Hidalgo draws the foul again, and this time it's going to be on Elder. So we can keep talking. We can keep talking to Hidalgo. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? Look at her in that USA jersey on the U19 team. Boy, just looks so so ahead of her years, right? I mean, you again, you're just looking at a freshman, but somebody able to lead a top 15 team, be named a top 10 player in the country, and, and some thought, as you were on that call as well to discuss, you know, there was a lot of people who felt she was in that top five uh, spot. Yeah. So I just I love to hear you know, so many different perspectives and, and insights. Ooh. And the fans love some of that. Oh, Benma with the huge block, and Hidalgo gets an assist from DeWolf for another bucket. You get a highlight off a big block, and it leads to unselfish play. More of it for the Irish. That's what I call a summer camp play. They're going to be showing that <laughs> possession to the, to the campers next summer. There you go. That's how you do it. Richardson again misses. Benma with the rebound. Final seconds here in the third quarter, and Notre Dame has just continued to build the lead. This has been the, the best quarter numbers-wise for the Irish all season. They've done a fantastic job at, in third quarters. They've outscored opponents coming into the game by 87 points. Off the mark, Watson draws the foul. She's going to go to the line with a half a second left in the quarter. More productivity here for the Irish. They're trying to get a three-point shot off that quick pass. They don't get it. Instead, get themselves to the free throw line. This one's good. Watson 62% coming into this game. One of the many McDonald's All-Americans on the roster. That's a couple of nice looking free throws. Western Michigan is going to be able to do here is inbound the ball. So we're headed into the fourth quarter. Speed painting. <laughs> it's a, a new a new skill that I was unaware existed. Yeah, I was pretty impressed. The, uh, the, the <laughs> leprechaun as Santa didn't see it coming. Yeah, it's amazing. So fourth quarter, Western Michigan trailing Notre Dame. Both teams final game before the break. Good steal by DeVolf. And the wolf down there in that corner spot. She went to the ball again. Bransford thought about the entry pass, then jacked it up, missed. Tuki. Yes. You hear the there string music. That was a good just a, a run of the offense here for Western Michigan. They want to play with that pace and that openness. You know, quick, good shot, and they took it. They've had successful possessions in this game. You know, I'd say any more normal situation, you look down 29 against the top 15 team. You know, it's pretty bleak, but I think Western Michigan can take a lot of positives from the way that they played this game. DeWolf's made five three-pointers in this game. Killed it. Yeah. She had only made nine the entire season. <laughs> Was hoping to get the call on that deflection. Well, <laughs> Coach DeWolf. And that, that's good. That's practice in the making for when you're going to have to persuade, maybe uh, uh, get your best argument, you know, for the officials. The Wolf may be the only player that is not going to want to go home. She wants to keep playing the way she's shooting that's right. right now. Hot. Got the double team on her this time. Lob down low. That's a little too far out of Watson's reach. Wolf having one of her better games as an Irish player came in averaging nine points per game. <laughs> Western Michigan probing this defense. Shot clock under 10. They've got to do something in a hurry here. Westbelt defending out on the perimeter. 
Glenn. And, uh, Notre Dame just being so disruptive defensively. Shot clock says 2.2 seconds. And a wolf reminding her teammates two seconds, no fouls. I love it. So Ricky with the underhand. Just smart defense by the Irish. Just you know the time and score situation. You want to know what's going on? There was almost your three you were looking for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she's made eight this season. So it's the only thing she has a zero in in the stat column. So look at my stat broadcast monitor. Backdoor play now working out for Western Michigan. If you're going to make the attempt, you got to go. That pass is going to be there. Notre Dame opens ACC play up against Syracuse on uh, New Year's Eve. At 2 Eastern time here in Purcell. That'll be the SEC opener for both teams. Watson. And a nice rebound by Marshall. Came crashing in to save the possession. Bransford in and out. And the rebound grabbed by Elder. Last year, this Notre Dame team exceeded expectations by winning the ACC regular season title. Kuki, another three. It's a good look underneath. The Irish continue to get the looks they want inside, and I love how hard Marshall is playing. I mean, she's going to fight for that offensive rebound. And I, Going back again to the performances she's had this year, averaging career highs. And that big role that she played in their 16-point comeback win against Tennessee. It's a great game. Yeah, that certainly was. And, uh, Notre Dame's only lost one game this year. That was the South Carolina in the season opener. The, the intangibles just seem to be there for Notre Dame. You're up 26, and they seem like they're yeah. playing as if the game's tied. I've seen no drop off in effort from the Irish. Well, and, and if you look at the coaches and the faces there, they know how, how important to stay locked in, stay focused. I mean, Coach Ivy told us, hey, it is so hard to get to the Final Four. And I believe that they have the pieces in place to get there, especially when you get <laughs> Citron back. I mean, that's what you got. You got that coming off the bench. Marshall with the SWAT. Sending messages throughout the land. Your package shall not be delivered. You put it back on Santa's sleigh. Mm -mm. <laughs> You've been waiting all night to get that one out, Brooke. That was awesome. I promise you it came <laughs> off the top. I promise. Come on, you wrote it down earlier. Come on. No, it's, it's getting late now. It's, it's mama, mama Delirious time. Oh, I love it. Under a second on the shot clock, so it's going to have to be a, a lob and shoot. And that's exactly what they tried, just didn't hit the rims. Ricky gave it a good effort, though. Yeah, I'm not, I was about to say, I'm not mad at the effort, though. That's no. an that's athletic play. She's falling backwards, gets the ball, and, and is still able to get even an arc on it at all. Didn't hit the rim, but that's a hard play to hit. And so Ricky. Coach was upset. He missed her out of high school because she grew up about an hour away from Kalamazoo. Our coach was kicking himself that he missed her that first time around. So he said, when, once he found out she was transferring, we had to go out and recruit her. A technical, you know, hey, I probably had 100 technicals over the course of my career. Not many of them were for chirping, but. You know, that's what you get when you got a competitive player. Sometimes it's like you can't help it. Somebody brings out the best in you. But Hidalgo will, she'll respond, she'll learn from this. Probably the last time you hear her chirp back. Yeah, that was, uh, she's been going at it pretty hard with Gabby Saxon, number 10 for Western Michigan. Officials uh, finally called her on it. That's what happened on that last possession when they got the two free throws in the ball. Again, that's just kind of that edge Hidalgo has. And there's players getting tangled up. Looked like it was Elder holding on to Marshall.
Togo will throw it in. Westfield pulling up. Right to Bransford. And then Bransford draws the foul. So you got to deal with the size, not only of Notre Dame post players, but their guards able to put such a, a presence in the paint. Bransford at 5'11", strong player at Mount Notre Dame, Cincinnati, a, a very historic history to women's basketball program. And the, the Western Michigan Broncos just had trouble putting bodies on all night long. The rebounding edge continues uh, for Notre Dame. 48 to 26, the edge. Bransford was a back-to-back -back winner of Miss Ohio basketball in high school. McDonald's All-American. A lot of the Western Michigan players actually are going to be leaving to go home for the holiday break from South Bend. Here's Kuki. Off the mark. Uh, Hidalgo tried to throw it off of Zaricki and didn't hit her, asking for some help. It's going to be a yeah. turnover. Yeah, trying to avoid that trap. She had picked up her dribble, and unfortunately, her teammates had headed down. Didn't expect the double team to occur there in the corner. A rare turnover tonight for Hidalgo and Notre Dame. I probably thought she'd get out of it, you know? I mean, oh, it's <laughs> Hannah back there. We'll just take off. She'll be fine. I was full on expecting her to throw it out of that double team and then go chase the ball down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Marshall with the unintentional bump of Zaricki. Marshall gets called for the foul. That's her second. Zaricki driving baseline, unable to turn that corner because good baseline defense from Bransford. You see how she led her into Marshall? No. Marshall perhaps late on the help side ended up with a foul. I love the way Bransford kind of led her there. Mm -hmm. Nice take all the way to the rim. Nile Magira Orbe from Spain. Hidalgo through the lane and draws the foul. We're late in the game, and Hidalgo's put in some minutes, and her speed has not diminished. This is what Coach means when he says she's a Jet. She's already got the double-double tonight, 23 points and 10 rebounds. And a reminder that on New Year's Eve next Sunday, it'll be a women's basketball quadruple header right here on ACC Network. Noon Eastern, Florida State and Wake, then Notre Dame against Syracuse, followed by Louisville, Miami and then NC State Virginia in the nightcap before we ring in the new year. Hidalgo with a steal, and it'll lead to a layup. She read that one all the way. Knew that pass was coming, timed it well, and got off her feet in a hurry to go get it. Steal number five for Hidalgo. She leads the nation in that category. And the Westbelt committing the foul out front. Westfield is going to have to take a seat. That's her fourth foul. Let's see it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I, I understand her argument. Absolutely. I mean, it was offensive foul as well as action above the shoulders. It took an elbow to the chin. That's got to be so frustrating. I mean, an incredible cool. level of emotional maturity for Westfield <laughs> to not get yeah. frustrated or lose her cool. I mean, seriously, that's. I mean, you, you just got elbowed in the chin, and you got called for the foul. And you're able to keep your cool and just go take a seat. Like, that's true leadership at work right there. It's bigger than you. It's, it's about the team. So she wants to set the example. Hey, I didn't get the call I want. OK. Yeah. She's still on about it, and that's OK, because she's going to come <laughs> back in and speak with her game. I, I love it. That's a competitor. She should be mad. Let's build a legacy player here. Her sister also played. In fact, uh, her sister, Kat. She and her sister, the only two sisters to ever score over a thousand points in their careers at Notre Dame. 
Notre Dame will keep it. 334 left to play. Dalgo lobs it out. And they tried to go right back inside. And a lot of fouls now. And her sister Kat was on that 2018 yeah. NCAA championship team. The first one for Muffet McGraw. That had to be an amazing childhood for Maddie to see her sister win that when she was a little girl. Well, you look up at the banners and to have the 2001 National Championship and then to do it again in, in 2018 where ACL tears were running rampant. Oh my goodness, KK, give him a gift. <laughs> the bow. And Notre Dame made the most of that season. It's seeing them in the first round against the NCAA tournament. You, know, you would not have, have known that they were going to be the eventual champions, but they did it. Let's go back to this. This deserves a couple of looks. Ooh, nice move. Lots of spin on that one. 76-47. Marshall still working inside. And a nice second effort by Bimma. She couldn't get it to go down, and Western Michigan will get it back. But again, no drop off in effort from the Irish. No, and I think the technical call that Hidalgo drew and the timeout right after that was exactly what the Irish needed to get back and focus. Not the technical, I'm talking about the timeout. You really see, you know, if any, Maybe a possession of a lull, but not many for the Irish. They've been able to stay locked in in a game where they were supposed to dominate, and they did. Offensive rebound by Sir Nugel, who's into the game for the first time. Hidalgo. Sir Nugel, originally a walk on. Uh -oh, gets uh -oh. the way up. <laughs> That's going to get everybody hyped. Needless to say, a very popular player here. She earned a scholarship last August, but again, originally a walk-on here. And I love the bench's reaction when she made that layup. Westbelt was just going out of her mind. <laughs> well, these are the players who give their time, their effort, you know, barely get a second to ever see it realized on the floor. And, and that's true joy right there, right? When you got teammates that are more happy for you to score than for themselves, that's when you know you're doing something right. Obimma with another nice shot. Yeah, Obimma getting her master's degree right now in nonprofit management from California. So many outstanding students on the floor tonight. Hidalgo grabs that rebound. Looks up the floor to Obimma. Bucket. Made that pass look easy. Dropped it in there like Mahomes. Okay, we got the, the triple-double watch on now because she's got nine assists to go along with her 26 points and 11 rebounds. So we need one more assist from Hidalgo to get a triple-double. And uh, under 90 seconds, seconds to do it. Yeah. Plenty of time. I, I'm going to guess I'm going to feel like a steal to assist coming up. Hidalgo. Defending Carlson gets that. Now, if she gets rid of it, and there's a bucket. Oh! I was holding my breath. That's why I was quiet <laughs> over here. Yeah, I, I get paid not to hold my breath in that case, <laughs> or, I or I would have. I would have been right there with you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. still has time. There it is. Got an assist? Yeah, you got to give her that. Triple double for Hidalgo. Let's go. Yes. Following in the footsteps of her big sis, Olivia Miles, who did it as well as a freshman. So 26 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. She's got five steals. So if she can get five steals in 38 seconds, we may as well just put her in the WNBA. <laughs> No, we need her college hoops. We want her here. <laughs> Hold on. It's a career high rebounds for Hidalgo, by the way. So Hidalgo coming out of the game, a triple double being announced. What an outstanding performance.
26 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. And Notre Dame's just going to hold it and let this run out. And uh, how about this performance by the Irish, Brook? I mean, just impressive, especially before the break when you know you can relax a little bit. The Irish stayed sharp. They stayed together, and they got the big win that they knew uh, they could get against the Western Michigan team. So the Irish head into the holiday break uh, feeling pretty good. And they have navigated so far in this early part of the season to a 